My name is Henry Huang, pain physician at Texas Children's Hospital Pain Clinic at Houston, Texas, United States. The purpose of this video is to educate providers regarding diagnosis and providing initial treatment to a common problem in pain clinic, sciatic tension. Sciatic tension can be caused by three different causes, myelopathy, verticalopathy, and neuropathy. Let's talk about them. First, myelopathy is a central nerve lesion caused by spinal cord compression. Second, verticalopathy is a nerve lesion that is caused by spinal nerve root compression. Third, neuropathy is a peripheral nerve lesion that can originate alongside the track of the nerve. In this video, we will talk about neural tension caused by sciatic neuropathy. It is important to also know myelopathy, verticalopathy, and neuropathy can share similar symptoms. My colleague today will help demonstrate sciatic neural tension to determine whether the Neurotension is a component of the patient's initial pain complaint. Jones, Doctor of Physical Therapy at Texas Children's Hospital Pain Clinic. We're going over sciatic nerve tension testing. The sciatic nerve originates from L4 through S3. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to put your elbow on the patient's leg, go over their knee to maintain full extension, and then grasp their ankle to support the leg. You need to bring the leg up into hip flexion and have the patient stop and they experience symptoms. Then determine if there's local tissue such as the hamstring stress or the nerve, you have to see if you can change the symptoms without changing the hip flexion degree. You're gonna bring the leg into a deduction. So you bring the leg towards the opposite, the opposite leg and ask the symptoms better or worse than the second. Worse. Then you're gonna bring the leg into a deduction, so away from the opposite leg. And then ask the same question, better or worse than the same. Yeah. You're bring the leg back down. And the final question you wanna ask is, did you feel any symptoms in the opposite leg? No. If the patient says yes, it indicates a nerve root lesion that needs to be investigated further. It is a straight leg raise with a tibial nerve bias. You place your elbow over their knee and grab their ankle for support to maintain full knee extension. Then you grab the foot, the opposite hand, pull it into full dorsal flexion and e version. Then you pull the hip into flexion and have them tell you to stop when they experience symptoms. Ah. Then you're going to see if it's a local tissue or a nerve by moving the leg into a deduction and asking better or worse the same. Of course. Then you move it into a deduction and ask the same question. Better, worse, the same. Better. If the symptoms change, then it indicates the nerve. The final test we're going to do is a straight leg raise with a peroneal nerve bias. You push your elbow over their knee and grasp the ankle to make full knee extension. Then push the foot into full plantar flexion and inversion. You're going to flex the hip until the patient experiences symptoms. Stop. Then you're going to test if it's a local tissue or the nerve by moving the leg into a deduction. Better, worse, the same. Worse. Then move it to AB deduction. Better, worse, the same. Better. If the patient experiences a change in symptoms, it indicates it's the nerve. You can initiate treatment by giving the patient a sciatic nerve light. You're going to have the patient flex their head and grab the back of their leg. And they're going to kick their leg up until they experience symptoms and return to the starting point. They can do this up to 20 times or until the symptoms get worse. You can bias the tibial nerve by having the patient pull their foot into dorsal flexion and do an exercise, and the peroneal nerve by having the patient pull their foot into plantar flexion to do an exercise.